Good afternoon. Um, Big Ben has now struck two. Just leaving, I joined um, the webinar on my phone, thinking I could see the see the screen, the questions, but I can't. So we're going to start. There might be some more people who join. Um, my name is Laura, so I work for Blatchford. Those of you in the UK, um, hopefully you'll know who I am. Um, anyone joining from overseas will recognise that I have a Scottish accent, or you might think it's just a funny accent. So I am from Glasgow. I'll try to talk slowly um, just so that uh, I'm understandable. But today we are going to do a, a webinar on our carbon fibre products. So it's it's about feet. Um, and just so you know, everyone, you'll notice you're on mute. Um, the webinar is being recorded, so the recording has already started. If you have any questions, throughout, then please just put it on the, the Q&A section. I'm going to have to switch between screens. So it might be that I don't get to the questions until the end. Um, if there's a problem and anything freezes or, or something happens, then if one of you has my mobile, send me a text or send me a message and I'll try and pick it up. But hopefully um, technology will not fail us. Um, there are no handouts available to download because I don't know how to add them. Um, but if anyone would like handouts, please email me. My email is at the bottom um, and I can send you the handouts with the notes um, sections uh, added in or I can add, add the notes um, to it. Um, and again, there are, as far as I'm aware, there's no test questions. So don't stress about that. That's more for the US market. Um, where they get credits for the webinars. There, there are no credits available. This is just for fun um, and to, to spend an hour together. Um, if we have a new website, so it's blatchfordmobility.com. If you go onto that website um, and then follow through to click on I'm a professional and then down the right hand side, there'll be a section on webinars. You can click on that and past webinars are loaded onto that. This one will be loaded on as well. So you'll be able to, to look at some of the other products, product um, webinars. So we're gonna start, this is intended to be an overview of carbon fiber feet um, by Blatchford. And we're focusing purely on the fixed ankles. But again, if you have specific questions about any of the hydraulic ankles, um, that we're not going to cover in the webinar, please send me an email and then I can arrange to have a chat with you or, or if it's an easy question, I can email you back. So the objectives of this webinar are really just to highlight our carbon fibre feats. We're going to cover the low profile options uh, through to the feet that are designed for more active users, so the K3, K4 feet, and then we'll finish with the activity or running specific boots, which is the Blade XT. Uh, and we will talk through how to how to align them um, and any kind of fine tuning advice, we'll cover that towards the end as well. So the feet um, follow the, the same principle. So all of our feet follow the same design principle. Um, and you can see this um, on the screen, this is the Esprit foot. So we have um, completely independent heel and toe springs, um, and you, you can hopefully see that they're not they're not even contacting each other. So there's a carrier that connects them, and the reason for the independent toe springs it really stems from a paper done I think it was 2006 by um, Hafner, and they they found that having a separate heel and a separate toe allowed for um, more energy return essentially, so more axial compression uh, through to mid stance compared to having a solid frame. So we can then um, maximize on our heel and toe energy absorption and therefore energy return. Um, you'll also notice on this one, so the, this, is, this shape is really for a K2 to K3 activity user. And you can see there's nice gentle curves um, to help have deflection over a longer period of time. So to make the, the foot smoother to use. 
Uh, we also wanted to have a, a heel spring that was as long as possible, which again would help to maximise on energy storage and return. So hence um, the position where we attached it. And we've got this e-glass material or e-carbon, depending on what side of the pond you, you live on. And the reason for that is really to resist delamination. So we know that carbon fibre bends very well um, in one direction. So if someone's walking or running, then they get good energy storage and return. But if it's used in the opposite direction, then um, it, it can start to delaminate. So we've developed this material, which helps to resist um, delamination from bend in the opposite direction. And then we have this tripod system. Um, so it's, it's stable, we'll come on to that a bit later. Um, and all of our feet have a split toe. So this stems from making a foot in the past, um, which had, had a solid toe. So this is when I say in the past, I mean, going back to kind of the millennium, which doesn't seem that long ago, but it is a wee while ago, um, having a solid toe and it not performing as well for medial-lateral um, medial terrain. So we wanted to then develop this split toe. So that's all of our feet. You'll see that they are very similar um, in, the, in the design. The shapes will vary, which we'll see as we go on. Oops, there we go. And we have, it's fairly new, we have this sandal toe. So in the past, um, the toe springs ran parallel to each other and it fitted into a foot shell that didn't have a split toe on the foot shell. Um, we were asked by several clinics um, in the UK and the US and, and around Europe if we could develop a, a sandal a sandal toe so people could wear um, sandals, obviously, or flip-flops, um, which we don't necessarily recommend, but for beach use, it's okay. Um, and so we had to then change the design of the toe spring so that rather than being running parallel, um, they, they run at more of a V-shape. Um, so that is something that you you may notice if you aren't as familiar with the product, but you've used used the Esprit in the past, for example, it will look slightly different now. Um, they have a Kevlar reinforcement as well, which you can see on the underside of the toe springs and the heel. And this is just to resist wear. So if abrasives, i.e. sand, um, get inside the foot, then compared to having just the carbon on its own, the springs last longer, so the Kevlar um, improves the durability of the foot. And just as a point, um, you cannot fit an old style toe spring into the new foot shell and vice versa. They're, they are not compatible. So if you have someone on an old style foot uh, and you require a new foot shell, then you will need to order the new toe spring. Um, when I say new, it's not brand new. I mean, we're, we are talking a few years ago, but if, if there is anyone who comes through your door that's on an old product, then you'll need to get a whole new toe spring. Um, the reality is that foot will be long out of warranty, so it might be worth just ordering a, a complete new foot anyway. And when we, for optimum energy storage and return, we need to think about how the, the spring deflects. So what we are expecting is that spring deflection will increase as the load applies increases. So we, in an ideal world, we can see this graph, it wouldn't be a Blatchford webinar if we didn't at least have one graph. Um, but on this graph, we can see that we have load in newtons on the X axis at the bottom. And then we have deflection in millimeters along the Y axis. And in the perfect world, we would have um, more of a linear line. So we would see that as the load increased, we would have the same amount of increase in deflection for the same amount of increase in load. So that is the gray dotted line that kind of starts at zero and then goes up to, to hit the um, 11 millimeter line. And so we want to try and have a foot that best mimics the linear line because this isn't a perfect world. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, um, but we, we want to have as much deflection as possible with increase in load to make it easier for our amputees to walk. So on the graph, the 
green line represents the esprit. Um, and then at the point of doing this little internal study, we had three competitor feet, so they're represented by the other colours. And if we look at, so say we have a 75 kilogram amputee, if we converted that into load then or into newtons, then it's about 750 newtons. Um, you have to times it by 9.81, blah, 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 blah. I can't do that. So rounding up to 10, we're saying it's about 750 newtons of load. So if we think about somebody just standing, so vertical load during standing will be around about this point, so the, you know, the 375 newton mark. And we can see that the esprit has a maximum deflection, which is then suggestive of having better ground compliance. So the esprit performed better um, in that situation compared to the competitor feet. And then if we look at that same individual walking, we're seeing that the peak vertical load would happen around about 900 newtons. Um, so this is more in the loading response uh, stage. Um, and at that point, we would have max, maximum deflection, i.e. shock absorption. And again, you can see that the esprit performed better against the competitors. Um, so we know that then in standing and walking, the esprit is a really good foot. Um, and offered more deflection for ground compliance. So that's for standing and then more shock absorption during walking compared to the competitor feet. So the design, we are happy with the design because we, we could see these results. And a little bit more about the foot. So why would you use the Esprit? So it's a very good entry level foot um, for an energy storage and return foot. So we're talking about the amputee population who are a K2 or K3, um, this isn't suitable for a K1 user, they'd be better on a different product with no energy storage in return. But for those K2, K3s, um, especially primary amputees, uh, then the Esprit is a really good entry level foot. It's waterproof, so that can that's advantageous for a lot of people. Um, and we would say if you're fitting it to, so for a primary, at the start of their journey, their rehab journey, then it's likely that they won't be putting enough of their body weight through the foot um, to get the best results or the, the best deflection. That's just, um, that's just what happens with primary amputees. But then as they progress, um, then they'll, they'll become more confident and they'll put more load through. Um, and the, the esprit is a really good foot because it, will give some more shock absorption in those early stages, but then it also will, um, as they become more confident and their residual limb heals more, then they can put more weight through, they'll start to feel the benefits of the energy storage in return. Um, if you're fitting it to a K2, then we suggest going down a category. So from the um, prescription guidelines, they're there for a transtibial K3. So if you're fitting it to a K2, then just go down a spring rating. And similar to transfemorals, so we would recommend going down a spring rating for transfemorals as well. Uh, the Esprit, of, of all of our carbon fibre feet, the Esprit has the lowest build type. So for a, up to size 24, it's 65 millimetres, and then that goes up to 75 millimetres for a size 27 to 30, so obviously 25 to 26 is in between, so 70 millimetres. And um, so it's quite a low build height for a good energy storage and return foot and is very popular. Um, we also wanted to look at this medial lateral compliance. So this was part of the, the rationale behind, well, is it better to have a split toe compared to a solid toe? And so we inverted the foot by five degrees and we wanted to know how much vertical load it would take for the same 75 kilogram patient or amputee um, or guinea pig in this particular case for the for the their weight if they could go from five degrees to foot flat and measure the load at foot flat. So it took 500 newtons of vertical loads on the spree. So that's achievable. If we go back and we say that their one times body weight will be 750 newtons of load. So they're able to achieve foot flat for less than one times body weight. So definitely achievable just in, in standing. Whereas 
the competitor feats that we we saw on the graph, they had two times body weight, so 1500 newtons of load to go from the five degree tilt to foot flat, which then means that that's not achievable in general standing. So if somebody was on those feet, then they felt that they were less stable because the foot hadn't gone foot flat. Moving on to the Epirus, so the Epirus looks very similar to the Esprit, um, the top part is different, um, which hopefully you'll, you'll see, and the difference really being we have this additional multi-axial joint, so those of you who are familiar with the multiplex foot, um, it's still popular, it's been around since the early 80s, and people still fit it for K2 amputees. Um, Traditionally, it was also fit for K3 to 2K3 amputees before um, carbon fibre feet became, became more popular or, be, or became more available. Then a lot of people were still fitting the multiplex to, uh, to their K3 amputees and therefore they were missing out on some energy storage in return. Um, so given how much people liked the multi-axial movement of the multiplex, but then they also liked the energy storage and return of the Esprit, we wanted to try and combine those two features um, into one foot. So we have this carbon fibre foot or energy storage and return foot, but with the multi-axial joint. Um, so it's a, yeah, aimed really, compared to the Esprit, this is a better foot for people who, who require more stability. So in loading response, the heel spring deflects, that's the same in both the Esprit and the Epirus, but the difference with the Epirus is we get some plantar flexion simulation. So some of you may be familiar with, uh, well, I know some of you are familiar uh, with hydraulic ankles. And so the plantar flexion comes from hydraulics um, changing and, and the foot will plantar flex and go completely foot flat. If hydraulics isn't an option, then the Epirus is a, is a great alternative, not as good as, as an echelon, but it's a great alternative because we still have that plantar flexion simulation. So in loading response, we have more stability. Um, this makes it better for transfemorals, it makes it better for um, bilaterals as well, or those with weak quadriceps or a, a condition that means that they tire throughout the day. Um, it's also smoother, so the reports from our demo amputees, they, they all felt that the Epirus was smoother when compared to the Esprit, and that makes sense because we've got this additional movement. Um, underneath this metal uh, or this grey dome, which the pyramid, uh, the male pyramid is sitting on top of, we have a buffer, so there's three options. Again, it's similar to a multi-flex foot where it has the, the different um, density snubbers. So we have either no buffer at all, um, or we have a medium buffer, which looks like it, the, the castellated one. So there's little uh, kind of wedges cut out of it. Um, and then we have this firm buffer, which is a solid rubber buffer. So those will be pre-fitted, so depending on what spring selection you've chosen for, for the amputee, it will already come with the correct buffer. So that's either there won't be a buffer in, um, or it'll be one of the two buffers that you can see in the picture. Um, you'll also get the, the other buffer. So if, um, if the medium buffer is fitted, then you'll still get the firm one um, in the box. So you do have the option to stiffen the plantar flexion movement if you would like, or simulation rather, not movement, um, or conversely, if you've got the firm one in um, or, or the medium one in, you can remove them and have nothing at all and swap them around. So it's still a low profile foot, um, even with that extra movement. Um, so it suits people with longer residual limbs or reduced clearance, um, but who require some more stability. It's not waterproof, so that might be a reason why you would stick with the Esprit over the Echelon, uh, over the Epirus. Um, and then again here we've got some, um, just a little bit of technical data. So we have a pin um, that goes through through the, the 
rubber unit or, or yeah, through the rose joint. So that means that the strain is taken through that pin rather than being taken through the rubber. If anyone has, has multiplex, sometimes the, the rubber because it moves against a metal collet and there's there's definite movement that might have produced wear on the ball. Um, whereas this doesn't happen and you can see this pin at the bottom and the bottom left and um, that's how much movement we get. So it allows for um, multi-axial action. I've only really talked about the plantar flexion part of it, but it, it does help with some in any version as, as well as the um, split toe. And we're now going to move on to our K3 to K4 product range. So we're calling this the elite product range. It might be confusing because the next four feet all start with elite. Um, but think of it as a group of feet that are in this elite um, range. So the, we're going to start with the elite two. Um, I'm going to just refer to it as the elite, but it's branded as the elite two and has been for, for quite a few years. And then the elite VT. And then we'll talk about um, actually the elite blade and then the elite blade VT. So you can see that they, they are similar but different. So we'll go through. Um, each of the each of the feet. So again, it's this will be familiar. You might start dreaming about this um, slide, this tripod effect um, tonight. But just to highlight the similarity between all of our feet, and um, the difference is really between the elite, which is this picture that you can see, and the esprit, which was the first one that you can see. See, so yeah, I start to get confused with the names. Um, you'll notice maybe that the heel shape is different. So the Esprit had that nice um, kind of gentle curve. This heel spring has more of a V shape, um, which then indicates that it's more dynamic. And we know that we get greater vertical um, or axial displacement on the Elite compared to the Esprit. Um, this was done partly in the States like to, to check an L code against um, shock absorption but or, or the shock code. So we measured that there was about 11, just over 11 millimetres of deflection. So that's beyond the standard. So definitely more dynamic, more, more deflection from the heel and therefore the energy return will feel different um, and improved as well when compared to the speed. Um, Again, the heel and the toe are separate, so they don't conflict. That also helps with this um, shock or, or shock absorption or de deflection, the 11.4 11 millimetres that we talked about. Um, so it's aimed for higher activity users. It's partly to do with um, the angle of the toe um, and also the, the shape of the heel. So it helps with forward progression um, during active walking. So Esprit K2, K3, Elite K3, K4. And then we can see here, and again, this, this is just the Elite, but there's a similar effect um, for all the carbon feet, the benefit of having this tripod system. So the video nicely shows um, how, how much the, the toes, the independent toes move against each other. So if someone's on uneven ground, then we know that one toe will, will stay on the ground and the other one will deflect um, to accommodate for the uneven terrain. Um, and also the, the split, I'll just play that again because it's quite a nice little video. Maybe it won't play again. Might play again, it might not. Um, but the split prevents um, the toes from rubbing against each other as well. So we know that the, the design will be improved or is improved. Oh, there we go, it's playing now. Um, so who would you fit the Elite to over someone that you'd fit the Esprit or the Epirus to? Well, really, it's it's a lower build than the shortest blade. It's a higher build than the Esprit, so, but it's still relatively low. Um, so it's good for people who have longer um, transtibial residual limbs um, or anyone with build height issues. So it's definitely K3. K4, so it's not really suitable for a K2 amputee. Um, and a lot of people, because you can have a foot shell, it's waterproof as well. So you can see the, the guy on the surfboard um, 
is able to use that foot. Um, he, he'll be able to use it for walking, but then he can wear it without without a shoe on his surfboard and it, it doesn't matter that it's getting wet. Um, if in doubt, and we'll come on to it a bit in a bit more detail later, but if in doubt, go for a lower spring category because I think um, there's a tendency for people to over over prescribe. Um, I think amputees tend to tell us that they are more active than they actually are. Um, and in that scenario, they, they might feel that this foot is actually a bit stiff for them. So I would um, under, go for a lower spring unless you're sure that they're definitely a more active amputee. So again, moving on to the elite VT, um, they all start with E, makes it easier in some ways, but harder when you're trying to remember the names. Um, this is pretty much the same as the elite, but then you'll notice that there's the addition of a torsion unit. Um, so the elite VT, because it's got this torsion unit, then it does reduce impact um, on the residual limb, but also on the the joints, the proximal joints um, from twisting and turning. So in more dynamic sports um, or where someone's doing rapid changes of direction, then they may feel that the elite VT gives them or is more comfortable for them, but gives them more of a response when compared to the elite. Um, the rest of the design is the same. You can actually change um, if you had someone on an elite and you wanted to try the VT, you could just uh, probably get a demo unit of the VT and swap it on. Um, so so it is, it's good that they're interchangeable from that respect because it means that the, the changes are due to the addition of the component rather than the whole design changing because the heel and the toe are the same. So just... Going over again, we allow for this torsion, torsional movement, which then reduces the shear forces that we would expect to see um, around the socket interface. And when compared to if you had the elite plus a separate um, torsion or um, tele you know, shock absorption or torsion unit, then this combined together then means that the build height is lower. So I'm really referring to the Elite and the TT Pro, so just talking specifically about Blatchford products, then the Elite VT offers a lower build height and a reduction in weight, so it's a better product if you have an Elite um, and then want to put, the, um, put some torsion on. Um, and so who would you fit this for? Really, I've probably just gone over that, but again, it's K3, K4 um, amputees, those who maybe, those who either or have always had a torsion device and therefore won't go without one, um, or where you feel that they need more, they, they need the product to absorb more of the, the ground reaction forces um, and therefore reduce shear forces or impact, impact loads on the, the knee joint if they're trans tibia amputee you're going up to the hip and also the back. Um, so yeah really anyone who's that activity level K3, K4 and then still wants a relatively low build height but needs the additional torsion compliance um, then you can fit them with the Elite BT. So the pylon uh, which is or the spring which is in green um, here is made from titanium, so it's, bit, it's machined from a solid block of titanium. It's quite clever how it does it. Um, and then that has a, a sort of diamond coating around it. So it's a titanium pylon, so it's very tough, um, hard wearing, and then it still offers this movement. It's a very clever piece of engineering. And so moving on to the Elite Blade, so again, tripod design, no surprises there. Um, you'll notice so it's got the same heel shape as the Elite and the Elite VT, but then you'll notice that the toe spring is longer. Um, I might refer to that as the shank. So then it's ideal really for the, the recreational runner um, or the more active runner. It um, gives you all the benefits of the Elite, but with more... Um, more spring deflection, which you'll see in a video in, in a second. Um, you'll notice that there are two proximal options, so male and female, so you've got that choice. 
um, while you order it. And this really is a, a kind of one foot fits all. So for your active K3, K4, where you, you can fit the, you know, you've got enough build height, um, then this really is a great foot because it allows them to wear a shoe with it um, so they can walk on it, but then also put a trainer on and run. So if, um, yeah, it's really, a, if someone only wants one prosthesis or can only get one, but wants to have a good, comfortable foot for walking, but then also be able to run, then this is this is one of those ones that ticks the box. Um, and so the top, the picture on the top right, you'll see, so this is um, Lee, one of our demonstrators. She's about to start running on a treadmill. So the treadmill has been inclined um, and therefore the running, um, he's really, when he starts going, he's gonna land on his toe, which she probably does to, to a certain degree anyway, even if he runs on level ground, because he is a fast runner, unlike myself. Um, but you can see in the top, the, the photograph is still at the top right, how much that toe spring is deflecting. So how much deflection the shank offers. And then hopefully you can see that if the video is not too jumpy um, when he's running on the treadmill. So at this point in time, the heel isn't compressing because it's not contacted the ground. So all of that deflection is just coming from having the benefit of the additional length of the pylon. Um, and this is one of Lee's favourite boots. If, if he doesn't wear a hydraulic ankle, then this is this is yeah, probably his preferred foot, um, where he can walk, you know, quite aggressively on it. He's a fast walker, but then he can just switch to running, and the foot um, the foot helps him to do that. Um, and this is Lee again running. So really, what we're seeing here is just yeah, it's. I would fit this over an elite personally, um, with the exception of if I didn't have enough build type. Um, the shortest, so there is a minimum build type for the elite blades and the elite blade VT, which, which you'll see in a second. There's a line on the, the pylon that says, you know, basically don't cut below this. I don't think it actually says that, but it, there's a there's a line that indicates the minimum, the minimum cutting line. So that is still taller than an elite so if you can fit a blade in at the minimum build then I think your end user will find that it's a more active foot compared to the elite and therefore I'd recommend fitting the elite blade over the elite and um, it's also waterproof as well so that's no problems um, and then this is just the, the same slide again but with the VT so just showing that it's all the same and then with the addition of this proximal um, VT unit so providing that shock absorption again um, and rotation and because this foot's aimed at more of a, an active amputee then again the, the benefits from having the additional VT unit means that rapid changes of direction or going around a corner um, should feel more comfortable on the blade VT there's an obvious cost of additional weight, um, which might be a trade-off, but you can um, try, you know, you can try the, the elite blade and then you can just fit the VT unit. You don't, you don't have to have a whole new foot. So the, the elite blade is the elite blade and then you order the VT unit separately. So you're able to try out which one feels better. Um, so yeah, I think this is, this again is a dynamic foot um, it's a one one foot fits all and it's good for anyone who maybe plays sport like basketball or squash or someone who, who goes to the office during the day um, and then goes to the gym either at lunchtime or, or on the way home um, or someone who, who just likes to run but wants to have a trainer then either you, you won't go wrong with the Elite Blade or the Elite Blade VT and it's just a question of how much um, your patient wants that additional um, shock absorption and torsion control. So some people, as I said, you might immediately go for the blade VT because you know that they need the torsion unit. Um, others may prefer to have a slightly lighter foot and they can cope without the, the VT unit. But hopefully you'll see at the bottom, like just the, the way that the springs work um, throughout the gait cycle or throughout the stance phase really. 
So the, the benefit here is we've got the heel spring deflecting, but we've also got this axial spring compressing. And then as we get to, to mid stance, the heel spring has extended, the axial spring is fully compressed. And then so just as the heel comes off the ground, that axial spring returns to its full length. Um, and therefore we get more energy return when compared to without the axial spring. And also obviously compared to the elite and the elite VT, because we've got this um, longer toe spring, you can see how that bends as well. And therefore more energy is returned when the blade starts to extend going into late stance. Um, so this is just a bit of summary. You can see this in the catalogue, but it tells you the weights. Um, apologies that the American format is first. Um, obviously, in the UK, we work in kilograms, but they're all rated to 166. Um, and they're all at the same level. We do, I mean, it says, in the catalogue, it says that the Elite 2 can be used for a K2 amputee. I personally would fit the Esprit um, if it was on a K2, for sure, if it's an elite two, you want to go for the lowest impact and definitely go down a spring. But um, personal, yeah, personally, my advice would be that stick with rate three, uh, sorry, activity level three and four for the elite. So we're just going to go through a little bit of scientific evidence um, and then uh, we'll talk about our last product. So this particular study was done in the States. So it was looking at military personnel and they'd made up an obstacle course. How the military like to have some kind of obstacle course. Um, they had three different feet. So the elite blade was one of them and then two other feet that were, were not Blatchford feet. Um, and there were multiple benefits really from the elite blade. One was that you can see 50% of them of the veterans preferred the blade over the other two feet that were in this study. Um, and they also found that they, they completed the obstacle course in a faster time with the elite blade. Um, time isn't always, a, a quicker time isn't always reflective of a positive change. So sometimes um, with lower mobility users, we might say that actually a longer time may indicate that they're in more control. But in this particular case, um, fast time uh, for, for these active amputees just suggests that they're getting more response from the foot, uh, less effort required, and therefore they can, they can complete the course faster. Um, and then for the same study, they found that the metabolic cost was lower than the other feet. So that's essentially saying that the amount of energy that they used for the blades was lower. So that helps to say that actually they could go faster as well. Um, and the heart rate, so when they walked at their self-selected walking speeds, then the heart rate was comparable to able-bodied individuals. So we know that amputees will have a higher um, heart rate, they'll have a higher energy cost compared to non-amputees. Uh, we also know that the military population, if they're currently um, going through training, then they they are more likely to be, they're likely to be as close to the able-bodied population compared to um, other amputees. Um, so just bear that in mind, but this particular study found that they were comparable to able-bodied individuals. So that could just be because they're, they're more active, but they're more active because the foot um, helped them to be as well, which you can see by the, the metabolic cost. And then there's lots of evidence to um, looking at shock and torsion adapters. I think everyone knows how beneficial they are for amputees. These are just some of the studies. Um, the one that I think is important is this is the third one. So reducing the ground reaction force and the loading rate. Um, and loading rate really is the, the rate at which force is applied to a joint or, or to, um, yeah, to, to the body. Um, so we're saying that the body incorporates this prosthetic foot as well. Um, and in other, other so non-amputee population, there's a link between a higher loading rate and an increased risk to injury. So 
whereby in um, some cases we may want higher ground reaction forces if we're looking specifically at um, Paralympic athletes, so we're looking at performance. But for the most part, we want to reduce the loading rate because that we know that then that keeps the residual limb in a, in a better environment and less risk to having injuries. So with the shock and torsion adapters, this one study found that we could that the loading rate was reduced by almost 40% during gait. So that's quite significant. Um, and that's why these, these devices are popular. I think most people um, would choose to have them. I mean, uh, if again, it's the compromise of weight, which we've already mm. talked about. But scientifically, we know that they're beneficial to our amputees compared to without them. And then this graph just shows, so this was done internally in, in Basingstoke in our head office, just the difference really between the elite and the elite BT, um, as well as the elite blades and the elite blade BT. So comparing the, the BT part of it. So the we've got the stance phase on the X and then energy um, or string deflection on the Y axis. And the light blue is the heel deflection darker blue is the toe deflection. So you can see at the point where the light blue and the dark blue meet, and um, that's essentially how it's going to be at mid stance. So sort of how smooth that transition um, from kind of plantar flexion to dorsal flexion moment will be. And then when we add this green um, line, so this represents the axial spring on the VT unit, then we get, because we have a third spring, we have this combined spring or combined um, line, it's not the right word, but um, the black line represents those three springs. And the point, I mean, obviously you can see that the um, deflection's larger, it's higher, and therefore the energy return is increased in late stands. But this point at mid stand, so where we have the transition from the heel working to the toe working um, has a nicer curve. Um, so if you're an artist, that maybe just looks nicer, but what that translated to for the amputees was that they felt that it was smoother. So the comparison, just by having that extra BT element, they felt that it was a smoother gait um, and yeah, they, they preferred it. So fitting recommendations. Um, this is in the catalogue, so this is for all of our products, you'll see a similar diagram. Um, but this is specifically for the this range, the elite range. So the elite is used more in the States. It's used quite a lot in the States. I think in the UK, it's not used as much. Um, and part of that, as I said, where there were some kind of issues with people finding that it was too stiff. Um, but that really is because of an over prescription. So you can see we've got the spring rating. So that's um, going with the the amputee's weight, but then we also have this impact level, which has got the, the red circle, so low, moderate, and high. And the moderate, so it says aggressive walking, frequent or daily sports such as jogging. So that, that actually is quite active. And probably most of our amputees will be in the low category, which is daily walking and occasional sports such as golf or hiking. So that's important to make sure that you understand what you're what your patient is doing. Um, if they are doing jogging, if they jog three or four times a week, then yeah, sure, like they would be going into that moderate. But if they, they just like walking and they don't really jog, then they don't need as high an impact level. And therefore you will choose a, a softer spring. So if we go back to our 75 kilogram patient, um, you should be able to see that. I actually can't see it very well on my screen. I need some glasses, but it's in the 69 to 77 um, section. And so if we chose a moderate, then they would be a spring rate four, whereas if we chose a lower, then they're a three. So that's the, I think that is the, the problem where people have felt it's too stiff. It's because um, too high an impact level has been chosen. So just bear that in mind when you're fitting them. Um, in terms of the alignment, so all of the all of our carbon fibre feet follow the same principles. Um, we've got, the, as you can see, we've got the, the foot shell. The new sandal toe has a little dimple, which represents the where the weight line goes. 
So just it makes it easier. You don't need to measure um, from the, the back of the foot, measure back a third. You can just use this dimple um, and socks don't get in the way or anything. Uh, we've also got this heel wedge. So I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But that stiffens the heel by one, sorry, by half a category. So if you fit the heel wedge, which will just fit right in the, the kind of apex of the heel spring, then that stiffens the heel spring by half a category. So it's, and they come, it comes with the foot. So don't just chuck it in the bin because it can be quite useful. Um, all the feet come with this fitting guide. So that's in the instructions for use, which again will come with the box that you'll have multiple um, pamphlets all saying the same thing, but find the language that makes the most sense to you. And then you can just follow through. There'll be a chart like this. Um, and then you can also find it on, on the website. So if you just click on the product and then I think it's on the, the bottom right hand side, there'll be a technical section and you can download the instructions for use. If you're doing an elite blade um, or an elite blade VT, you will need to have a cutting jig. So this silver cutting jig that's in the picture, it doesn't come with the product. So you have to order it separately. Um, obviously, if you are working in a, in a clinic, then chances are you'll have one lying around. Just if it's if you need a new one, then just um, the part numbers in the catalogue. So with this, we, we suggest setting up all of our carbon fibre feet five millimetres longer than the height that you measured. Um, uh, but with the blade and the blade VT, we say at, set it up 15 mil longer just to give you um, some room to play with. This is just in the early stages. Um, it allows, allows adjustment while the patient's standing or when they're walking. Um, you can use this for indoors. It's better not to use this cutting jig outdoors um, unless they're walking sort of slower because obviously these bolts, the, the black ones are just gonna be hand tight. So there's a chance that they could come loose. Um, having said that, that's completely up to you. What you do in your clinic is up to you. Um, but it's certainly in the parallel bars, fine. Outside of the parallel bars for walking, it's okay. And then, if you really feel like living life on the edge, you could you could try a light jog in the parallel bars, um, but just bear in mind that this could move because it's just hand tight. Um, and then when you're happy with the height, then you just um, all the instructions come with the foot, but you just drill through the holes. You don't you don't take the jig off, so you drill through the holes, draw a line on the. Um, on the top and then you know where to cut that um, but the holes will be in the right place um, and then yeah it's pretty straightforward it's a little bit scary when you do the first one in case you get it wrong but it's um, it's quite straightforward and so really this chart kind of helps well hopefully what i've said will help but if you still need a chart then this can help in knowing what foot to choose from so where finances allow um and prescription guidelines allow, then hydraulic ankles would be the starting point. Obviously, we're talking about the K2, K3 um, level amputee. If you specifically want something to, for someone to run on, then hydraulic ankles would not be um, your first choice. But as the everyday leg, um, hydraulic ankles would be the go-to because there are multiple um, benefits, which we know from scientific evidence. But if you want uh, more energy return and you're going away from hydraulic ankles, then you could start with um, the Elite 2 for the K3, K4. Um, as I said, I would probably go with the Elite and cut down to the minimum because I think you get more energy return from that compared to the Elite, sorry, the Elite Blade cut down to the minimum because um, you get more energy return compared to the Elite. Um, additional, if you want the torsion unit, then that takes you to the Elite VT or the Elite Blade VT. Um, if you can't fit those products in or you have a lower activity user, then the Epirus would be my go-to um, just because of the extra stability. But if you need something that's waterproof and low profile um, or you, you can't fit the Epirus in, then the Esprit would be the option. So we're gonna just finish on the Blade XT range. So that's the Blade XT 
in the mini blade XT, um, the mini blades for paediatrics, so for children, so it's high impact foot. And it has some unique features. So it's got a heel spring, which helps with um, stability. So we're talking about stability for deceleration, um, changes of direction, descending slopes, so walking or running um, down slopes. And then it also provides shock absorption. So um, compared to just the toe spring on its own, we get more shock absorption with the heel. And um, it gives good standing balance because they have more, um, more of the foot in contact with the ground, um, which also then helps with the energy transfer, giving a smoother rollover. Um, and it also can protect against hyperextension injuries, so hyperextension of the knee. And then we have the C-shaped toe. So that's been designed to provide like optimal energy return in a forward direction. We've still got the split toe, um, so good ML compliance. So again, for running around corners, changing direction, uneven ground. And then we have this traction sole. Um, so it gives improved safety um, because it has a better grip than not having the sole. It's non-marking, so it can be used indoors. Um, and it is field replaceable, but really it's the heel, the whole heel unit that you will replace in the field. You cannot take just the rubber element off the heel, so you have to replace the whole heel. Um, setup is similar, the only thing would be to add this wedge, so because you don't fit it with a shoe. So for the Blade XT, I would add a 10mm wedge, and the Mini Blades, we have this 5mm wedge. Um, it's got a little line on the foot, so you can um, that helps with your alignment. And then for the dynamic alignment, you would adjust the plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, first of all. So you want to maintain a heel strike, um, but you, you want to try and optimize on energy return. Uh, once you've got the angle correct, then you can um, do some fine tuning by shifting. So that's kind of fine tuning really the toe stiffness. Um, and again, we've got the option to add a wedge in which stiffens the heel, but this time it will stiffen it by one category, whereas for the other feet in the elite range, it's half a category. So again, looking at some of the clinical evidence, we have, um, if we think about mobility, so one study looked at um, unilateral transtibial amputees running at sub-maximal speeds, and they found that the Blade XT consistently performed for changes in running speeds. So there wasn't then a change in how the, the prosthesis felt when, um, when the speed was changed. So it, the, almost like the foot could adapt to changes of speed um, better compared to what they had originally. Um, and then another study found that in walking, the self-selected walking speed increased while using the Blade XT foot. So that's similar to that military study. And then looking at loading symmetry, um, during a forward bound movement, you, the participants demonstrated more confidence in the Blade XTs to load the prosthetic side in a similar way to the intact side. So that's what we want. We want um, as much symmetry as possible. And in another study, they found that the, the Blade XT was the prescription of choice. So when, when people had, I think that was another military study, but I think that was done in the UK. Um, so yeah, people preferred the Blade XTs to what they had before. So why, when would you use the Blade XT over the Elite Blade? Um, so neither have the torsion unit. So the Blade XT is more dynamic. There will be more of a response. Um, I would suggest using that, first of all, obviously, if you can fit it in, um, because I think it's a better foot for running. I think the heel makes a lot of difference um, so it's, it's suitable for walking as well. The only thing would be you cannot fit a shoe onto the bottom. So if that's important to the amputee um, or they want to, they, they wear the foot to work um, and they don't want, they don't want to have the blades, then the Blade XT rather, um, then they could go for the Elite Blades. But the Blade XT is a more dynamic foot. So in summary, um, we, we do offer a range of feet, um, low profile and sort of more active feet. And then for those um, super duper people who run, um, we've got the, the Blade XT. So I think hopefully you'll feel that there's, there's something for everyone. Obviously we don't offer 
um, like a foot for an adult signs. Um, we, we don't have anything lower than the SB, but for everybody else, um, there'll be something for everybody. So I'm going to now try to find the actual Zoom bit and see if there's been any questions. No questions. So that either means that you've all switched off um, or, oh no, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong screen. There is a question. Uh, so there's a question, what happens if you cut the Elite blades too short? Well, hopefully you won't do that. Um, if you, I think with the, the cutting jig, it really means that it, it's quite difficult to cut it too short. If you spend the time with the patient um, making sure that it's the right height for running, if, for walking, first of all, and then if they are going to use it for jogging, perhaps try you know, a, a kind of light jog in the parallel bars. But they, they yeah, spend, spend probably more time doing your height adjustment, getting them walking around in the clinic room. You can go and have a cup of tea or something um, and then cut it after that. If you ma if you get it minimum minimally wrong and the you know the patient goes away and they come back and say, oh it's a bit too um, yeah, it's a bit too short, then you you probably at some point will need a new toe spring. Um, you could just fit, if it's like a few mil or up to five mil, you could fit um, an, an insole in, um, in, the, in the shoe of the prosthetic side. Um, if you've massively got it, got it wrong, or what's more likely, they get a new socket and the socket style changes, then if it's too short, you can fit some, some adapters in, so double, double adapters to add the length. Um, and then that will help with the height, but obviously it adds, adds a bit more weight. Um, what's the difference between a javelin and an elite blade is another question. Um, so the javelin, so thanks for that question. The javelin is a K2 to K3 foot and the blade is a K3 to K4. So the javelin uses the heel that the Icarus and the Esprit use. So it's more of a, got that more gentle curve, whereas the blade has a different heel, so it has that V-shaped heel, um, and the blade uh, has the toe spring is one category softer in the javelin. So if you have a rate three javelin, then the, the toe spring will actually be, it will just have less carbon in it than the rate three on the blade, if that makes sense. So overall, a javelin is a softer foot. Um, if you've got someone who's a K, K3, K4, um, I, I know I've got a patient who is just quite a slow walker, so kind of lazy walker. And actually, although they do run and he, he plays football um, and coaches football as well, um, if he, he tried the blade, but he felt that it was just too, um, it just went forward too much, too quickly for him because he's kind of lazy. Um, I would say that to his face and he's a bit more of a slower walker than he preferred the feel of the javelin. So think about how aggressive your, your patient is. If they are a really fast walker, um, then they'd, they'd be better on the elite blades because that will give them more energy return. If they are, um, you know, they do dynamic activities, but in their general walking, it might be that the javelin suits them. Um, and then another question, just to clarify what of the, which feet are waterproof. So the ones that are not waterproof, the Epirus is not waterproof um, and the Elite Blade VT and the Elite VT are not waterproof, um, but the other feet are all waterproof. Um, the other thing, the Elite Blade and actually the Javelin, they come with a gaiter. Um, or perhaps you have to order it separately, but it, there's a little a rubber black rubber gaiter that you can fit over the toe spring, um, and then that sticks onto the you can stick it onto the top of the foot shell, so that helps reduce the amount of um, grit that can get into the foot shell, and then therefore um, um, can improve the durability. So if you're not using a cosmetic cover, 
then it might be um, with the javelin and the late blade, then that's a good good option to use the gaiter. Um, but we don't have a gaiter for the other feet that we've talked about. That's not to say that you can make something up. Um, if you've got some clever folk in the workshop, then they could they could probably drape something um, and make something if you don't want to have the traditional foam cosmesis. So I don't think there's any questions for people, any more questions. If there are, please type it um, now, or as I said, feel free to email me. Um, for anyone in the UK, you know that there, there is an option to try the feet. I think in America, um, they've got the 60 day return. So we've got that in the UK. I don't know about other territories, but if there's something that you particularly want to use, um, or you want to try a couple of feet. So for example, you, you maybe want to try the javelin and the elite blade. Um, if you don't know which one's going to suit or the Epirus and the spree, then just get in touch with your local rep and they can arrange for a couple of feet. Um, so you can try before, before you buy. All right, um, thanks for your time. I hope you're having a good week. Um, it's Thursday, so it's like chill day. Um, well, for the UK. Um, so yeah, I hope you have a good 